A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Mark Appel was supposed to be the next big thing. Let me explain. In 2013, he was drafted number one overall by the Houston Astros to be their star pitcher. But as time went on, he began to watch his friends, his teammates, get promoted to the major leagues while he continued to struggle in the minors. That all culminated this past fall when those teammates won the World Series and he watched from his couch at home. In part, that led to his decision this past week to retire from baseball at the age of 26, making him just the third player in history to be drafted number one overall and never make it to the major leagues. And I think that in a situation like that, we would understand a little bit of frustration, maybe even some bitterness on his part. And that's why I was so struck by his comments in an interview he gave after announcing his retirement, comments he made about the place of baseball in his life. You see, the reporter asked him, are you disappointed? Are you disappointed with the way that things turned out? And he said, well, yes and no. Yes, I am disappointed. Making it to the major leagues was a dream of mine. For as long as I can remember, I always wanted to pitch in the World Series. But ultimately, no, I'm not disappointed. Because that dream was always conditioned on my health and my happiness. If I made it to the major leagues, but I was miserable doing it, what was the point? Despite all the expectations that were placed on him, Mark Appel never let baseball define him. It was something that he did, but it was never who he was. Well, for St. Paul, on the other hand, being an apostle, being a preacher, is his identity. He tells us in this reading today, that he has to preach. An obligation has been placed on him. And woe to him if he does not do it. This mission, this preaching, this apostleship governs everything he does. It governs every decision he makes so that he can tell the Corinthians that although he is free in regard to all, he has made himself a slave so as to win over as many as possible. He has become all things to all to save at least some. For Paul, preaching isn't just something he does, but it's who he is at his very core. I suppose the natural question then is to ask us, as Dominicans, as preachers, which is it? Is the preaching mission of our order something that we do, maybe because we like it, because we're good at it, because we think it's important? but still something that can be put down or taken up, you know, as need be? Or is this preaching mission who we are? So that our very identities are summarized by the word preacher. So that our whole lives are oriented to the gospel. And woe to us if we do not preach it. Which is it? Is preaching something we do? Or is it who we are? Because I think in a lot of ways... That first option, it's something we do, it's much easier, it's much simpler. 
Think about Mark Appel in baseball for a second. He's able to step away with no regrets. Things didn't work out the way he wanted it to, but he has plenty of other interests that he can pursue, and now he has the time to do that. He can move on, and as he himself acknowledges, he's still free to try to return to baseball in the future if that's where he sees himself going. Likewise with preaching, if it's something that we do, then when it becomes too difficult, when it becomes frustrating, when we don't know where to go, we can set it aside, pursue other projects, and return to it when the time comes. Paul's way carries real risks. Paul tells us an obligation has been imposed on him. Woe to him if he does not preach. But where does that leave Paul when things don't go well? We know the Corinthian community wasn't the easiest to work with. What then? Where does Paul go then? It's been remarked frequently, but we live in a culture that is extremely wary of long-term commitments, especially among the young. People ask, why would I commit myself to something long-term when I don't know what's going to happen in the future? You might ask, how can I commit myself to just one person for the rest of my life when I don't know who either of us is going to be in 10 years? How can I commit myself to a faith, to a church, when the truth seems so divisive and when it's so hard to find? We, as Dominicans, on the other hand, as vowed religious, have promised publicly that we will commit ourselves to something, and not just to anything, but to preaching. We've committed to preaching that commitment, even when it becomes difficult. And I think that places us in a unique position to witness by our lives and our words to the value of commitment in our culture, to the identity that it gives us as people, as disciples. And I think that St. Paul is an excellent model of that way of life. He says to the Corinthians, All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. So that I too may have a share in it. Paul preaches and defines himself as a preacher, not by his success, not even by his efforts in the preaching, but by his living out of the gospel of Christ. Christ who is trustworthy, who is there with us when all else seems to fail. Paul commits, us, or Paul commits himself to the Paschal Mystery, and that's what we're invited to do as preachers. We know that Paschal Mystery will involve suffering and death, but we also know that it ends in abundant life. Woe to us if we do not live the gospel. Woe to us if we do not preach it.